Thank you. So um, I just want to go ahead and just let everyone know that obviously the topic of uh, today's conversation here is on the screen here behind us. I wanted to uh, reach out and thank Amy Andrews, who's down here to the left, who reached out to me earlier this school year and said, uh, we have a presentation, a talk, that we'd like to come out to your school free of charge and talk to you about. And uh, that is, as you guys have been maybe listening to the news or reading the newspaper, the rise of e-cigarettes. There's not a lot known right now uh, about what that is going to do to people's lungs and how that's going to impact your health. But Dr. Wilcox is here to, to answer some of those questions and to go over some of those things because it is right now a huge epidemic amongst uh, teenagers. So I want to give an introduction really quickly about Dr. Wilcox. Uh, Dr. Wilcox graduated from the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine, and then he completed his internship and residency at Emory University and his fellowship at The Ohio State University. He specializes in sports medicine as well as the operative and non-operative treatment of the knee, shoulder, elbow, and ankle. He is an expert in arthroscopic surgery and is well trained in the most recent advances in minimally invasive surgery which offers patients faster recovery, less pain, and improved function. Dr. Wilcox is active in the community and has been a team physician for Westerville Central High School and Audubon University for over 15 years. Being a team doctor for several schools, he's seeing a growing number of kids using vaping, not only in athletics, but in general as a whole. He has a talk titled, Clearing the Air, the Dangers of E-Cigarettes. He's very passionate about the growing use of vaping in our schools, and is here today to talk to you about the dangers of these cigarettes. Please welcome Dr. Wilcox to the Valley And you may ask yourself, so what's a, an orthopedic surgeon and a sports med doctor doing talking about vaping? Uh, because it's, it's personal to me. I have a 16 year old son who goes to Dublin, Sciota. And, uh, and I also have older daughters that uh, are also uh, have boyfriends, and, and uh, so I talk to them, and, and this is something that's sort of been uh, an epidemic. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's not just, uh, you know, it's crossed all socioeconomic lines. It, it's, it's not just the fringe kids, um, it's everywhere. It's, uh, it's the, the valedictorian, it's the star quarterback, the, the captain of the volleyball team, this, uh, this, and this, I would call it pandemic, uh, but this epidemic is, uh, it, it seems to just reach just about everybody. Uh, and no harder hit than you guys, the teenagers, who uh, I will argue that this product has been marketed towards. So um, we're gonna talk about clearing the air, the truth about e-cigarettes. And I'll, I'll say e-cigarette, I'll say vaping, it's pretty much the same thing. And probably most of you know what it is, or at least seen it. Uh, I am uh, right now at Hand and Microsurgery Associates in Westerville, and I've been a team physician for over, actually 20 years, uh, and uh, I've seen a lot of trends come and go. There are some not so stellar trends that were associated with athletics, um, you know, dipping uh, when I was younger, snuff, that kind of thing, chewing tobacco, but I've never seen any habit intrude upon uh, the young population more than this, and athletes and non-athletes alike. So. Uh, in the early 2000s, electronic cigarettes were accredited, accredited to be invented by a Chinese pharmacist uh, as a way to stop smoking. But that's actually not true. The big tobacco companies have been experimenting with aerosolized tobacco since the 60s. And they didn't really have an idea how to market it, uh, but they finally did figure out, they said, well, okay, let's just go ahead and market it as the safe alternative to cigarettes. And uh, really, it's anything but. As a matter of fact, now, they no longer are allowed to say that legally. If you look at the new uh, commercials, they just say, a way to get uh, nicotine satisfaction. So right here, this is the most common e-cigarette that's out there. It's called the Jewel. There's other knockoffs. But as you see, it's sleek. Um, it's easily concealable. And it's very attractive to young people. It's almost like a jump drive. Right here is the uh, jewel itself, and you put the pot in right there. Um, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I bought this illegally right down, you know, right, right down the street from my house. 
Act. This is a legal product that used to be sold to 18 year olds. Now it's, it's now it's got to be 21, but that hasn't stopped anyone. And a lot of times, most of the time, these convenience stores that sell it to you don't even check. Uh, so there's the jewel there. You buy these these pods, which th these have um, uh, highly concentrated liquid nicotine in them. And then you, you buy them in a four pack, and then you put it in, and then by sucking on the, the jewel, it, it vaporizes, it heats up the liquid, and it becomes an aerosol that you inhale. And that's how you do it. You've probably seen that before. If not, you will see it. So there are other brands out there. As a matter of fact, these are more popular now. These are the Enjoys. There's Blue, V2, Halo. There's a lot of them. Knockoffs are a little cheaper. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of these knockoffs, you don't even know what kind of product you're getting. Uh, they aren't made uh, in America. A lot of them are made in China. So this is another reason I'm here. Is Again, this is an epidemic that is sweeping the country. And as a matter of fact, sweeping the world, especially with young people. Between 2017 and 18, uh, the increased use of cigarettes has gone up 70. Is, the increase has gone up 70 percent in high school students, 48 percent in middle school students. So that's just in one year. Um, and this year, that vaping has surpassed smoking as the number one way that teens use tobacco. And a recent poll in the United States uh, that was conducted estimated that one in four students regularly use these e-cigarettes, and I, I argue that that's low. I think it's more like one in two. It's very, very popular. It's, it's everywhere, again, like I said. Why do they do it? I mean, same reason anyone does anything. Same reason you start smoking, same reason you do anything. It's because peer pressure, everyone's doing it. Uh, what's interesting is, is a lot of young people would never smoke. We've done a pretty good job as, as physicians in educating uh, the youth in the dangers of cigarette smoking. You can see here on the, right here on the, this picture here, smokers' lungs, the tar can cause black lung, Every, everyone sort of knows about that. If you're healthy lungs, you see the difference. Uh, but a lot of young people were told that vaping was a safe alternative to cigarettes. That's how they were marketed for years. A lot of people didn't even know that there was nicotine in these products, let alone know that nicotine is one of the most addictive substances known to man. As a matter of fact, I talked to Annette Franks, an addiction expert, who argues that nicotine is the most addictive substance in the world. You crave it every few minutes. And this nicotine in these pods is so concentrated that you're getting nicotine in your system at unprecedented levels. And we'll talk about what that does. So we talked about nicotine is a very dangerous substance. Uh, and we'll say why that is and the effects it has on your brain and your lungs and everything in a minute. Uh, one of those pods is equal to a pack of cigarettes. And so there are some kids that have a one pod a day habit, a two pod a day habit, which is like a two pack a day habit. And a lot of the parents don't even know, a lot of their friends don't even know because it's so easily concealable. There's also a very dangerous substance, propylene glycol, the flavorings that they use to attract younger people, like blueberry and mango and mint. These flavorings in the Stanford study have been shown to cause cardiovascular problems, severe cardiovascular problems, even young people. Benzoic acid, aquiline, which is a herbicide, formaldehyde, which is an embalming agent, all of these are found in high quantities in these supposedly safe e cigarettes. Here's another problem is that it's not smoke, it's aerosolized vapor that you're inhaling. And so it gets much deeper into the lungs, into, it, much deeper than cigarette smoke, and can get into very small airways and cause damage. And uh, it's these ultra-fine particles, they think, although no one knows for sure, but they think is the common reason why all these people are showing up in ERs with these um, severe lung diseases needing to be admitted to the hospital and some even dying. Uh, there's also diacetyl from the, the flavorings that causes uh, popcorn lung. We'll talk about that. Benzene, even the metals used to heat the coils, used to heat up the liquid, can get into the vapor itself, and you're, you can inhale that. And those are very dangerous. All right, so back to nicotine. Why is nicotine so dangerous? We said it's, it's 
one of the, if not the most addictive substance in the world, what does it do? Well, it, it enters your bloodstream very easily when you inhale it. It stimulates the adrenal glands to release epinephrine, increases blood pressure, breathing, and heart rate, which is not such a good thing if you're uh, during an athletic event or if you're exercising. Uh, but the main thing it does is stimulates the release of dopamine. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter in your brain uh, that is the pleasure transmitter. It's what you sense pleasure. So if, you, if you're young, it means like if you score a touchdown, you get a good grade, your new girlfriend comes by, that's the neurotransmitter release is dopamine. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very powerful neurotransmitter. And it's this constant desire for the dopamine high that causes you to become addicted to, uh, to any substance, not just nicotine. Uh, nicotine is also dangerous because when exposed at high, these levels that we're seeing, these concentrated levels to the, to the growing brain, and all of your brains are still growing. Your, your brain continues to grow and mature to age 25. So when nicotine, when you expose your brain to nicotine, it changes your brain. It starts to change the neural pathways in your brain, and it starts to make it more like an addict's brain to function like an addict's brain. And those pathways become warm. And the earlier you use it, and the more often you use it, the more those pathways become difficult to change, and the, and the harder addiction is to treat, and they can become permanent. Uh, so what are, the, what, what are the symptoms of nicotine addiction? Well, obviously, I'm unable to quit. And that really means unable to quit. I've talked to many teenagers and young adults who have tried to quit, they've thrown their jewel away, only to go purchase one the next day. I had one gentleman who threw it into the woods, only to go look for it the next day. That's how addictive nicotine is. You get these strong cravings every few minutes. Anxiety, irritability, depression, anger. Those are all, and they can be very intense if you're trying to, uh, uh, especially if you're trying to come off the nicotine. A lot of these young people just continue, continue drooling, even though they know it's bad for you. They say, well, yeah, but it's too late. You know, some people don't even try. Some will, instead of uh, quitting drooling, they'll change their habits, they'll quit the sport that they like, or they'll skip practice, or leave practice early, or they'll, they'll change their habits so that no one can, so they continue to drool. For instance, if you used to play basketball in the neighborhood, maybe in front of the house. Now you're down the street at a park where no one can see you hitting the jewel, vaping in between pickup games. All right, so we talked about this. We talked about nicotine's effects on the brain. Uh, nicotine, can al nicotine also causes uh, you to be more susceptible to psychiatric disorders as an adult. It changes your neural pathways, as we said, but can also make you more susceptible to mood disorders when you're an adult. Depression, agoraphobia, impulse control, all these things have been shown to be more common in people who use nicotine, especially the vaping. Uh, panic disorder, antisocial personality disorder, or other things you're more susceptible to. The biggest thing, though, is addiction to other substances, and we'll talk to that, how it starts off with this addiction pathway and moves on. Nicotine, long term, you may say, oh, it focuses me, it, it keeps me alert, you know, it, but over long term, year after year, it actually can cause cognitive problems such as short term memory loss, long term memory loss, dementia, trouble paying attention, that kind of thing. And that can become permanent. A little bit about the additives in the, in the, the vape aerosol. Well, propylene glycol uh, is one of the major ingredients. It causes high throat area irritation. Long-term exposure, it can, you can develop asthma, which can become permanent. It can be oxidized to propylene oxide, which is a powerful carcinogen. And that happens as it's heated up in the, in the, in the coils, and so you're inhaling a known carcinogen. The flavorings uh, were, were added, especially early on by Juul, but now by the knockoff products, to try to get young people in on it. You know, how can we, how can we uh, uh, make it so young people want to try it? Let's add flavors. So they added these flavors. And a recent study in, at uh, Stanford said that these flavors actually are some of the most dangerous 
parts of the product. They can cause strict edge issues, heart attacks, strokes, even in young people. Benzoic acid is uh, a common additive. Uh, Juul has the highest amount in it, uh, not surprisingly, because it enhances the effects of nicotine, especially the addictive effects. And you know who's put hundreds of million dollars into Juul? Big tobacco companies. And they market, think about this, they marketed it to you. They're thinking, you're so dumb that we'll market it as a safe alternative to cigarettes, knowing full well that it was highly addictive and that if anything, you're gonna continue. There's a study that showed you are four times more likely to try cigarettes after you try vaping. So it had the opposite effect. Uh, Benzoic acid also causes sore throat, cough, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Just name a few. Acrolein, that's a herbicide. It's known to cause lung disease, asthma, COPD, lung cancer, cardiovascular disease, just like everything else. I mean, it, it, it's a common laundry list that all of these can do. Now, formaldehyde is an embalming agent. It's a known carcinogen. It's actually in higher levels, in a higher concentration in, in the vapor, in vaping, than it is in cigarette smoke. You are more likely to have a, a, a cancer induced from formaldehyde if you vape than if you smoke cigarettes. Why? Well, they think it's because the vapor can penetrate deeper in the lungs and cause more damage, like you said. Um, it can cause leukemia, esophageal cancer. Oh, here we go. Risk of formaldehyde cancer. Well, it's one in 200 with these cigarettes, one in 500 with normal cigarettes, and it's, you know, one in a million if you don't smoke at all. And again, it's a small part as we think. Now, I was asked this morning, is there a secondhand smoke issue? Can people get, who aren't even vaping have, have a, a problem? Actually, yes. And uh, the ultrafine particles have been shown in five to 10 feet to be able to penetrate the non-vapor's lungs. So there is a secondhand smoke issue or secondhand vape issue, I guess, vapor issue. There, that is, we're just now starting to look into that. That's, that's early on, but there are some problems even with other people, so it's not, you're not just harming yourself. This is just a slide that talks about those ultrafine particles, uh, how ultrafine particles like diesel soot, exhaust, increase risk of heart attacks and cancer, way down, if it's less than a micron, which they are. Diacetyl is very commonly found in uh, these pods, it's highly toxic, it's banned in Europe, and somehow you can still find them in, in products sold in the United States. It is the one that's been implicated in causing popcorn lung. The real name is bronchiolitis obliterans. And what that does is it constricts the very small airways called bronchioles in your lungs and makes it hard to move air. And these small airways can actually have these little cystic outpouchings uh, that look like popcorn that are, that are useless. And so it's harder to exchange oxygen with the blood, harder to move the air. That damage is irreversible. And this is, this is a lot, a lot of these kids are showing up in the ERs that they have this, this bronchiolitis obliterans. Here's a picture of it. There's a normal lung, there's a normal uh, uh, um, bronchial right there. The normal uh, circumference here. Look at that constricted bronchial right there. It's very hard to move air through that. And here are the out pouchings right here. They look like popcorn. They're worthless. Benzene is another ad. It's used to make rubber and dyes. It can cause all kinds of cancer, like leukemia, myeloma, and Hodgkin's lymphoma, bone marrow failure, uh, low platelet count anemia. You know, I want you to memorize this, but just get an idea of all the problems that, that this safe alternative to cigarettes can cause. All of these compounds are known to cause this. Uh, Exposure to benzene is 10 times over non-smokers if you vape. Metals from the, the coils used to heat up the liquid, that can be found in the vaporized uh, fluid as well. Lead, cadmium, chromium, magnets, nickel. These can cause brain damage, cancer, respiratory disorders. All of these things are not good for you. What's the price? It's not cheap either. To buy a uh, e-cigarette, a jewel, an Enjoy is about 
30 to 50 bucks. But again, knockoff brands are making them cheaper. Cost of the pods, a four pack of jewels is about 16 bucks. Uh, so it's about 125 bucks a month, about $1,500 a year to a population that doesn't have a lot of spare change anyway. So it's, it's a big investment. Physical injuries, I'll talk about this because this is happening as well. Thousands of injuries are occurring yearly because these uh, jewels can actually explode. You get an overload, overflow of electricity to the battery and they can actually explode in your mouth, in your pocket, and you can cause very serious injuries. You can break a jaw, third degree burns, and uh, I had a little trouble believing this until I started looking into it. There's plenty of uh, pictures that you can find. This, this guy was, was vaping, the jewel blew up in his mouth, broke his jaw, caused a third degree burn right here. This is a, a teenager, had his uh, vape pen blow up in his mouth, third degree burns on his mouth, lots of burns in his face. This unfortunate gentleman obviously had one blow up in his pocket and caused severe burns in his thigh. Another gentleman whose vape pen went off in his mouth, broke his jaw, and then burned the side of his face. Lots of injuries, hand, leg, you can see. They, uh, they're not harmless. That, they don't go off like a grenade all the time, but there are enough of them out there that do this that we have plenty of pictures. We can show pictures like this all day. This gentleman had him blow up in his mouth and it broke his jaw. You can see down here. This is even CAT scan and blow his teeth. So this is a more recent slide. It's been in the news, so a lot of you may have heard of this, of, of the vaping problems. These mysterious vaping illnesses. In August, the FDA noticed that there was even an increase in seizures and fainting, and we don't even know what that's about yet. We're not even sure why vaping can lead to seizures. We're still investigating that. Fox News reported that dozens of teens in the Midwest were hospitalized with severe lung issues, shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, vomiting, some had to be admitted to the ICU. And even more recently, they started counting up the amount of cases. We have now over 12 deaths, according to the New York Times, that are directly attributable to vaping, and 800 related illnesses from vaping. And there's a rumor out there that, that you know, I've talked to my son, it's like, well, that's only the tainted cartridges from China, it's only THC, it's vitamin E, it has nothing to do with, that's not true. No one knows yet. The CDC has not come out and said, oh, it's this one, item, it's this one particle, it's this one cartridge, it, it's, no one knows because a lot of these kids vape THC, a lot of them vape uh, nicotine, some vape both, and there hasn't, the only common denominator is that they're vaping a substance, and I don't know this, but I think that they're probably going to find out the common denominator are those ultra-fine particles, so uh, even kids with, uh, who've just vaped nicotine, or adults, just vaping the nicotine with uh, with legal products bought in the good old U.S. of A. are getting these illnesses. The uh, Juul CEO stepped down recently because there is a criminal investigation going on now as whether or not Juul knowingly marketed their product to younger people. And I think that you'll find that probably they are going forward with that, and I think the CEO, CEO knew it was coming. They've also been sued as the false advertising that the e-cigarette is a safe alternative. At least the public is getting aware that these things are dangerous and they're not a way of getting off cigarettes. If anything, they're more dangerous than cigarettes themselves. So this is important too, because it, it's bad enough to just be vaping nicotine on, the, on your body and in public health in general. But reachers, reachers have shown that those who vape nicotine very easily, the majority of them, not all of them, but very easily transition to vaping THC, which is the known uh, psych psychological effect uh, of marijuana. It causes marijuana psychological effects. It is the compound that does that. They, uh, we call them dad pens, and, and here's what it looks like. <laughs> Yeah. Here it is. And it, it's kind of the same thing. It has a it has a cartridge on one end. 
He's got the stomach of man. Press the button. Same thing. You just, you just inhale like a cigarette. What's interesting about these, we call them dab pens, but they're just another form of a vape pen. Now, dabbing is a different, it's a little bit different than some people will actually, in, in their own home kitchen, will be able to, to make a residue of pure THC, even higher than in these legally bought cartridges, and then they can put those in the cartridges, and it, it's, it's exceedingly higher than anything that you can get legally, but it's also dangerous because you don't know what's in it. And that's to dab. So when, I, when we call it dabbing, it really is just a different kind of vape pen. But vaping of marijuana, THC, is very common. You can buy it legally in Colorado, in California, I think even Michigan. And what's, they either buy it and bring it into Ohio, or they just have it shipped. You know, by Federal Express, you can have it brought here. And it's very easily obtained. The problem is, THC is in a very high concentration in these cartridges. It's so high that it's extremely addictive. It's, I've had uh, students, teenagers, and adults say that the THC has been harder for them to try to quit than the, than the jewel, than the nicotine. This is not a, just a, a marijuana cigarette that's rolled up in smoke. This is a highly concentrated liquid. It's 70% more THC than smoking a uh, marijuana cigarette. There you go, that's the, that, we call it a dab pen, but that's really just a cylindrical vape pen, and there are the cartridges, right there. So what about these high levels of THC? Are they making you more of a chance of, of being addicted, like nicotine does? It does similar things to the brain. Problems with memory and learning, motor coordination, Problems thinking clearly and able to maintain attention. That's while you're on it. But the earlier you use it and the more you use it, the more of a chance that that can become permanent. Decline in social life, decline in school performance, decline, unable to, to just uh, focus at school. The biggest problem I see with kids who use a lot of THC is they don't care about not caring. They just sort of lose their drive. They were going out for the team, they decided not to. They were gonna, you know, try for that scholarship, they decided not to. And that seems to be a bigger problem. Athletic ability will decline as well. Again, when you're on the, uh, under the influence, loss of coordination, decreased alertness, reaction time, increased muscle fatigue. But that can become permanent too, the longer you use it, and the earlier you start using it. That's the big one, I think, of addiction. Those who use THC under the age of 18 have a four to seven times increased risk of developing an addiction to it. Why is that so important? Because addic being addicted to THC, especially at that concentration, leads to a dopamine feedback loop that makes it so you can't get that high. You keep looking for it. You need more and more of the drug of the THC to get that euphoria of the dopamine, uh, pretty soon you can't get it. There's no, it does, you just, no matter how much you use, you can't get it. Uh, there's a, a famous uh, rock star in the early 90s who said, uh, his name's Kurt Cobain, who said, I, I just got sick of smoking pot. Pretty soon smoking pot became like breathing air, so I looked for something else. He got addicted to heroin. He ended up dying of a heroin overdose. Uh, well, that's debatable, but he definitely used a lot of heroin, and uh, he was miserable. He ended up taking his own life. So, what happens when you no longer get that high from THC? You turn to other drugs, just like Kurt Cobain did. You turn to heroin, methamphetamines, cocaine, narcotics, and we are seeing a drug problem in high schools. This stuff, this, this path really does happen. Starts with the vaping of the nicotine, continues with the THC, and pretty soon you're in high school or maybe you're in college and you just are looking for something else. Teens who vape THC are three times more likely to transition to other drugs. That much we do know. So this is not a, a, a
harmless thing you're doing. This is something that if you do it early enough and long enough, it really sets you up to have a lifetime of problems. So in summary, there's an alarming trend of vaping nicotine and THC, not only in them themselves what they do to your body, but also what they set you up for. They set you up to be much easier, easier easily, I guess, addicted to other substances. Right. Also what's interesting, guess who's put hundreds of million dollars into cannabis? Big tobacco companies. They knew the trend. They knew exactly what it would lead to. So they're making a mint. We've spent a generation trying to get young people off of cigarettes, and they have just turned around and done an end around, and now are addicting an entire new generation to much more potent, dangerous substances. Nicotine and THC. All the research that has come out, all the news that has come out, says e-cigarettes are no way a safe alternative to cigarettes. In most cases, they are worse. And the take-home message is, the quicker you stop, the greater your chance of getting off of it. The, the earlier you start using it, the more you use it, the more difficult it is to, uh, to kick. So better yet, don't even start. That's one of the reasons I'm here. If, if you haven't started yet, don't, because it's a, it's a loser's game. If you have an addiction to THC, to Juul, and you want help, you can contact truthinitiative.org. You can text QUIT to 706-222-QUIT. There are other agencies like cdc.gov slash tobacco slash quit underscore smoking. Talk to us, parents, teachers will tell you. I'm trying to get the word out so everyone understands how dangerous these things are. So if you need help, please get it. Thank you. coming here and sharing this with us. At this time, if you have any questions, if you would like to ask Dr. Wilcox, we'll take a few minutes uh, for students. If you'd like to ask questions about this, please don't be embarrassed to ask a question. Uh, so I'm going to hand the microphone back over to Dr. Wilcox. If anybody has a question, please just raise your hand. And teachers, if you can help us, just kind of find out who that uh, student is and what the question is. We appreciate it. Right here. Yo, where'd you get the card from? Where did I get the card from? I got it actually from my daughter's boyfriend's friend. It's, and, but they're everywhere. You can get it everywhere. Uh, both the uh, both fake pens. Yeah, unfortunately. Part. Was it empty? Yeah, it's empty. Yeah. These kids are so, they don't want to give me a full one because they're, they're addicted to it. And I, I will tell you that I've talked to kids who have been addicted since they were your age, including high school. They're now in college, they're getting ready to go out of college, and they have a real problem. They've tried to quit many times and they can't seem to. What kind of flavor pot do you have in, in your jewel? Oh, I don't know. I never actually, I don't know. I didn't really say it. They just gave me an empty one. I have no idea. But again, the flavors are to attract you guys. Blueberry is a big one among young kids. And if you watch that, it's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous ad that causes cardiovascular issues. Death counts in 28, right. I, I made this slide just a few weeks ago. And so, this is a, an epidemic. The, people are dying from this, and no one, a lot of you don't even know that it's harmful. And it, it's gotten national attention, but it hasn't really uh, gotten the attention it should. And I think the main thing is there's been some misinformation. There are plenty of kids that I talk to who think they're safe because they don't they don't uh, vape THC, they don't vape uh, the knockoff cartridges from China with the vitamin E and they're safe. They have not come out and said that's the, that, that is the problem. It's been, uh, it's been rumored, but that's not it. Right now, we don't know what it is. 
It can be any, anything. It can be from China. It can also be the legal vape products that we get right here. That's the main thing, is you don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of schools that have alarms now for vape pens in the bathroom. You know, I think it's it's the right, it's at least showing that they're aware of it, but it's not gonna stop the kids. Uh, they're gonna find a way to vape it. Like, yeah, I see kids vaping um, when the teachers turn their back in the classroom. It's that easily concealable. Uh, they vape in the dugouts, they vape at, at the pickup games, they vape it at, at, in the gyms. Um, what's gonna stop it is you guys just knowing how dangerous it is and how it can affect you for the rest of your life. It's education. Last question back there, last question. It's a, it's a good question, right? And so, big money's behind it, right? So, what do you think actually be done about it? Uh, some will be done about it. It's gonna be a similar fight that we did with tobacco. Uh, it, 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 I don't think we'll find sweeping legislation. Now, the governor of Massachusetts put a, a temporary halt to all the sale of all vaping products. Uh, but I don't think that uh, that's going to be the purpose. I don't think that vaping will be outlawed. And if it does, it'll just get pushed to the black market. It, it's here to stay. So the way to combat it, like it was for smoking, unfortunately, is going to be years of grassroots education, talking to you kids, talking to adults, even saying this is a very dangerous habit. This is the reality. You know, don't let them fool you. So I, I agree, I think that there's a lot, there's billions of dollars invested in making sure you kids do get addicted, and making sure you stay addicted, and making sure that they get a big profit from it. So you're right, you just got out smarter. So uh, let me go ahead and thank Dr. Wilcox for coming here today. He does have a lot of So folks, once again, the reason why we had Dr. Wilcox come here today you guys know the truth about it because right now there's not a lot known about it and we'd hate for you to have serious lifetime uh, illnesses as a result of you doing something that you think is cool and that all your friends are doing. Um, we're going to have you report to your ninth grade class. If you have additional questions for Dr. Wilcox, you can please leave him down here if you does need to go to the middle school. Thank you very much. Uh, we are heading to ninth grade class.